one day I decided to test my graphics card for stability with the Fairmark GPU test. This test is known for its hairy donut. And once again watching this donut, I got the idea to recreate it using OpenGL and the sphere tracing technique. And as a result, I still created my own version of Fairmark using the Python language in the modern GL module, so let's take a closer look at how you can create this kind of furry objects. So the initial template for this project will be a simple class for our application that inherits from the window config class of the modern GL module. Here we set the window resolution and specify the directory with all the resources for the project. In the constructor of this class, by calling the super function, an open GL context is created, then we create a screen aligned quad plane, define the program attribute, this is the shader program, where we load the vertex and fragment shaders. I also wrote a safe method for passing uniform variables to the shader, so we pass the window resolution value to the shader, and in the render method we clear the screen, pass the time value to the shader and render the image on our quad plane. In the vertex shader, the in position attribute means the vertices of our quad plane, which are simply passed into the GL position variable to rasterize the entire quad plane into fragments. Next, in the fragment shader, we have an output color value for each fragment, this is the frag color variable. Here we see the uniform variables for the resolution value and the time value, and in the main function we just set the frag color variable to black for now. And if we run the application, we will see that a black window of the set resolution is created. But I suggest calculating the color of a pixel using a separate render function. And all calculations will be based on the UV vector, here based on the position of the pixel on the screen, this is the GL frag chord variable, and the value of the window resolution, we normalize our coordinate system so that its origin is at the center of the screen. And to make it clear, let's use the step function to make sure that everything is done correctly. And as you can see, the origin of coordinates is in the center of the screen and we can continue our work further. Since we will use the ray marching technique, now we will define the position ray origin from where we will emit rays and based on the vector UV we will calculate their directions, and in a separate function ray march we will find the distance to the object. And throughout the classics of ray marching for the initial object, I suggest using a sphere, in a separate map function we will define a signed distance field for our sphere. So next we write a standard ray marching loop. Here based on ray origin and ray direction we form a vector p depending on the distance to the object, we get this distance using the map function, the signed distance field always returns the shortest distance to the object, so we can break the cycle when we get close enough to the object or our array goes far beyond the scene. So, having received the distance to the object, we can now look at the current result, for this, let's add this distance to the resulting color. And in this way we can observe our sphere, and then I propose to start texturing our object. And of course, for texturing, we need the texture itself, so we load the fur texture in the main file and send it to the shader, for textures we need to apply the use method with the location number. Now we can access this texture from the shader, and it's important for us to write a function to calculate the normal. In ray marching, an approximate method is often used, it is based on the fact that at any point on the surface given in the distance field, the gradient of the distance field is the same as the normal of the object at that point. And by the way, you can look at the result of this function, for this we calculate the point P on the surface of the object and, based on it, then we get the normal. So we see that our sphere is now colored in the color of the normals to its points, and therefore we can start implementing the texturing function. In ray marching, the triplanar texturing method is often used, this will be a function in which we need to mirror the normal using the absolute value function, raise it to a certain power and again normalize by its components, Next, our goal is to blend the colors for the three projections, and where the normal component has more weight is where we get the most appropriate color from the texture. Let's use this function, while we can scale the texture using the vector p, I will increase it by two times. And as we can see, this method is great for applying various organic textures, and I propose to give our sphere a rotation in order to better examine it. Then first, write a function to calculate the rotation matrix for a plane depending on the angle. And now you can write a rotation function for the object, let's rotate on two planes in the same way as the donut rotates in the Fermark test. So this rotation function during texturing should be applied twice, the first time during the ray marching loop, 
and the second time after finding the result of the ray march function. And as a result, our sphere began to rotate, here we can once again verify the correct operation of triplanar texturing, and let's replace the sphere with a donut, that is, apply the sign distance field for the torus. So let's use the sign distance field for the torus, but in order to increase the accuracy for further hairiness calculations, then I will multiply the resulting distance by some coefficient that is less than 1. If we run the program, we will see the desired donut, but as you can see, there is a small problem with the texture due to the fact that it is not seamless and has been scaled. Then we just need to remove the scaling for the texture to display properly. Okay, we have the donut, but there is no hair yet, and one way to create hairiness is to change the surface of our object using a noise texture. So for our purposes, I found a black and white noise texture, and let's also load and pass it to the shader. So we got access to the noise texture, and here I originally wanted to use the bump mapping method to form hair on the torus, but in the end I found an interesting article called conformal tiling on a torus. There is some interesting math about the torus here, and these formulas could even be used for texturing, but I decided to use them for some displace function. I also found inverted formulas from this article on a mathematical forum, and tried to adapt them for our problem. In general, the meaning of these calculations is to find, based on the coordinates of the point P on the torus, the corresponding UV coordinates for our noise texture. And then, having this data, we can form some displacement value for our surface at a given point. And it remains for us to return to the ray march function, and apply the displace function to the distance to the surface of the torus. And finally, our donut is definitely hairy, but as you can see we have a lot of flickering, which significantly degrades our visual result. One way to improve our image is to use anti-aliasing. I decided to apply quad anti-aliasing using the rotated grid method, where we will render our image four times by shifting the UV vector by a given offset value, and the resulting color will be the arithmetic average of the four resulting colors. Now let's pass the offset value to the input of the render function and use it when calculating the UV vector, and then we can use the function with anti-aliasing. And if we look at the result, we can say that the quality of the hairiness of our donut has reached a new level. But as you understand, in addition to the donut in the Fermark test, there is a very interesting twisting tunnel in the background, and let's try to do something similar too. And for this, let's load and pass another texture to the shader. So let's declare a uniform variable for the new texture and return the render function, and for now turn off the rendering of our donut. To create a tunnel, the easiest way is to switch to the polar coordinate system, that is, we calculate the polar angle phi and the radius rho. And then we can form a vector st, with the components of which we perform some manipulations with the number pi, and as a result we get a color from our texture using this vector. And at the moment this method allows you to get a static image of the tunnel. If we add the value of time to the y component of the vector st, then we can get the effect of moving through the tunnel. The twisting effect of the tunnel can be obtained by changing the angle phi as a sine function, depending on the radius rho in the value of time. You can change the geometry of the tunnel a little, let's calculate some variable h by the sine function of the angle phi, and add this to the denominator y of the component of the vector st, then we get 8 convex stripes inside the tunnel, but it's hard to see them at the moment. Based on the value of the variable h, we can do some self-shadowing, something like ambient occlusion, and manipulations with smooth step functions are great for this. And as you can see the tunnel is getting more spectacular. And finally, I would like to add another application of the smooth step function, this will change the shape of the convex stripes to a more rectangular. Well, we can say that almost the entire puzzle is completed, and if we combine the tunnel with our donut, then we can say we have made our own version of the Fermark test.